there are many different versions of poker, but we will be teaching you the most popular and best version, Texas Hold'em. The object of the game is easy, to win your opponent's chips. This can be achieved by having the best cards or alternatively by betting and forcing all other players to fold. When a player folds, they are discarding their hand as they do not think their hand is strong enough to win the pot. In Texas Hold'em, each hand begins with every player being dealt two cards face down. Players must then combine their two cards with the community cards laid face up on the table. At the end of a hand, if two or more players remain, cards are shown and the player with the best five card poker hand will win the chips. Sound easy? Well, let's find out what beats what in the ranking of hands. There are many forms of poker that all use the same hand rankings. We're gonna concentrate on No Limit Texas Hold'em. Remember, a poker hand always consists of the best five cards made from the community cards and the two dealt to you. So let's check out what beats what. First, you have your high card. When nobody has a pair, the player with the highest card in the hand wins. You're more likely to win with one pair, a hand that has two cards of the same value and three unmatched cards. But twice as good, two pairs. Just like it sounds, two pairs and one random card. Not bad, but not as good as three of a kind. Three cards of the same value and two unmatching cards. Next up, you have the straight. A straight is when you have five cards in a sequence. Better still, it's the flush, when all five cards are of the same suit, but not in sequence. Now we're getting good. A full house is when you combine three of a kind and a pair, which is rare, but not as rare as four of a kind. A hand that contains four cards of the same value and one random card. Lovely, but beaten by a straight flush. A hand that contains five cards of the same suit and in sequence. Bettered only by the Royal Flush. The best hand possible, five cards of the same suit in sequence from the 10 to the ace. Nice. So there you have it. Don't forget them, write them down, whatever it takes. Just remember them, as it's pointless to play poker without knowing them. Hmm. Now, back to the tutorial. Let's look at how a poker hand is made. As we explained, each player must combine their two cards with the community cards. Here your cards are king, jack, and the community cards are ace, king, three, five, and jack. So what poker hand do you have here? The answer is two pairs, kings and jacks. But hang on, every Texas Hold'em poker hand consists of five cards. Well, in this case, the ace makes the fifth card, as it is the highest unpaired card also known as the kicker, but we will cover that later. Back to the basics. Before any cards are dealt, the small and big blinds must be posted. These are forced bets, which encourage further betting. The size of the blinds depends on the game being played, but the big blind is usually twice as big as the small blind. The players that post the blinds are always determined by the dealer button. Online, it is a disc with a D in it. The player to the immediate left of the dealer is always the small blind. And the player to their left posts the big blind. The dealer button is important as it determines the sequence of play. The button moves clockwise around the table after every hand so that everyone takes a turn of posting the blinds. Otherwise, it just wouldn't be fair. We have as mentioned, the blinds are placed before the start of every hand and are compulsory. Yep, that's compulsory. No getting away with it. Their presence encourages players to play their cards because if there are chips in the middle, well, someone will want to win them. Without blinds, players would only play the best hands possible or no hands at all. And that would lead to a very boring game. A poker hand involves up to four rounds of betting. The first round occurs before any community cards are dealt, and the first player to decide what to do is to the left of the big blind. In this case, the player decides to raise to 
following their action in a clockwise order, each player then has the option to fold, call, or raise. A fold forfeits the chance to win the pot, but doesn't cost anything either. A call matches the bet of the previous player and keeps you in contention. A raise increases the bet and forces anyone else to pay chips to continue in the hand. When the first round of betting is complete, the three community cards are dealt. The common term for these three cards is the flop. Once the flop is dealt, there is a second round of betting. Now the next person to act is the first player to the left of the dealer. If no one has made a bet in front of you, your options are to check, which effectively means to take no action. Or alternatively, you can bet a chosen amount. This player chooses to check. His opponent could also check, but decides to make a bet, forcing the player who originally checked to at least match his opponent's bet in order to continue in the hand. He decides to call. Once this round of betting is complete, a fourth community card gets dealt. This is known as the turn card. Then there is another round of betting. Finally, a fifth community card is dealt, known as the ripper card. And there is a final round of betting. This time, both remaining players decide to check. Once the final round of betting is complete, the player holding the best hand takes the pot. In this hand, the player holding king two wins the pot. Let's remind ourselves why. He has made two pairs, kings and twos. This is a superior hand to his opponent, who has one pair, jacks. As we have learned, two pairs beats one pair. I think that makes logical sense. 